Sorry, I was just talking for five minutes and I hadn't actually pressed go live. My bad. <laughs> Welcome back. I slept on it. It didn't get any better last night, did it? Um, it was only Ronaldo just texting me then saying, uh, are you sure? Because I said I was ready and uh, obviously I didn't press go live. My bad, everybody. Uh, right, so let's talk about what has happened again for me, but I guess it's the first time you guys are hearing it. Get your questions in. Uh, I've got the comments up over here. So Jim Radcliffe will pay $1.3 billion, or is at least proposing to pay $1.3 billion for a 25% stake of the club. Sheikh Jassim is understood to have raised his offer for United in June, but not satisfactorily enough to the point where the Glazers uh, wanted to accept it, despite the fact that it was far more than the uh, public valuation of the club um, listed on the New York Stock Exchange. Um, I'm just trying to get up. Uh, a post that I had up. Uh, supposedly, the the Qatari group's opening statement um, to return United to their former glories didn't go down well with the Glazers, and um, an offer that oh, this is according to Mike Keegan, an offer that offer many thought would render their purchase of the club a formality started on the wrong foot, and as the months dragged on, they failed to recover. So, for everybody wondering why. The Glazers are seemingly taking on Sheikh, uh, uh, Sir Jim Radcliffe's uh, bid and not Sheikh Jassim's bid because they're fucking butthurt about the reality, not an opinion, the reality that Manchester United are no longer as glorious as we once were due entirely to the 18 years of their ownership, right? So whether you were... 100% on board with Qatar, or you're 100% on board uh, with, Shea, uh, with Jim Radcliffe, or you're 100% Glazer in. There must be someone, right? I, I mean, even one of the Glazers. You cannot deny Manchester United are not quite as good as we were in 2005. I think that's abundantly clear for everyone. It's been almost 18 years and they've done fuck all with the stadium, fuck all with the training. I just don't, don't know what I mean. How can you see your ass? at the reality that Sheikh Jassim wanted to restore United to its former glories. We haven't won the, the league in 10 years. And in the five years, um, oh, sorry, the eight years that we had of us actually being successful while you were here, under Sir Alex Ferguson, uh, we had a negative net spend. Therefore, the successes that we saw under the Glazers, i.e. under Sir Alex Ferguson, up until 2013 were in spite of the Glazer ownership, not because of the Glazer ownership. You cannot be blind to the reality that Manchester United are not the club we once were, and it's because of you twats. Like, you can't be, you can't see your ass when someone goes, this is what it is. Well, that's not fucking fair. Well, it's the fucking truth, lad. How, how are you pissed off? Like, do you, like, are they... Does no one tell them how much they're protesting against? I. They are literally living in a fucking deluded world of good news only. They must be. If they've seen their ass with that, that's a piss take. And it shows you how little of a fuck they give about a club. They give zero. They give a fuck about only what's going to line their pockets. That's it. And the fact that they want to stick around a little bit longer is probably because they think this guy's going to invest a little bit and then we'll be able to get even more money later down the line. You're fucking abhorrent, the lot of you. Absolutely abhorrent. Anyway, Radcliffe and his company, Ineos, are expected to run United's football operations as part of a deal to purchase 25%, which is what they're calling the first step in a phased takeover. Um, so Jim initially wanted to buy all of the Glazers' shareholding, um, but that was vetoed um, by the board. Um, and the reason that was vetoed by the board probably does need explaining a little bit because it's, 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 it, is the, it is the legally correct thing to do, even if, like, as fans, you're like, don't care, fuck them off. Um, because the club has got shares that exist out there on the New York Stock Exchange, 33% of the club. Uh, so 33% of the club are in these Class A shares, which weirdly are a lower voting right when it comes down to board decisions than the Glazers class B shares. The Glazers wanted to sell their 
oh, they wanted to sell 51% of their shares to, or 51% of the club shares, which would represent whatever of theirs. Um, again, the maths on that's fucking beyond me. To Sir Jim, but you you couldn't legally do that because then the shareholders who have bought Manchester United looking for a profit on the 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 you know, the, the share price rising or falling wouldn't have got a single penny of that. That this just shows you what the Glazers are about. They was like, yeah, we've got these shareholders that have invested money into the club, i.e., into fucking you lot, and you're like, yeah, fuck them. Can we take our money out and and them not actually profit from their ownership of the club like we're gonna? It's fucking abhorrent. So the way that the 25% deal is that Sir Jim Radcliffe's getting now, at least in my understanding of it, is uh, 12 and a half is going to come from the uh, the Class A shares, i.e. the public shareholding, and then 12.5% of his uh, holding will come from the Glazers themselves, leaving us with, I think, something in the region of like 54% Glazer ownership, um, or 056 percent glazer ownership uh 25 percent jim radcliffe and 20.4 percent still um on the new york stock exchange in a in a public holding um so that's my take on at least on how it's it's been carved up now there has been talk of paul mitchell and even michael edwards uh being discussed in relation to being appointed um it also looks like and he's also going to explore how to expand Old Trafford into a 90-seat uh, stadium if Sir Jim's bid is successful with his stake. Um, and and there's a really good article on The Athletic, which I think is probably worth everybody reading. Um, so he says that a board meeting is scheduled... Uh, this is Laurie Whitwell, by the way. Uh, he said a board meeting is scheduled for Thursday and the fine details of Sir Jim's offer must uh, first be approved by the Glazers, who will then put it to a vote of the rest of that board. Um, again, the board that did veto the initial 51% offering um, from Sir Jim because it meant all of that was going to go to the Glazers and none of that would have gone to the public offering, which I guess maybe it was legal, otherwise they wouldn't have tried to do it, but it's certainly immoral. Um, Jim wants immediate control over the sporting decisions and is proposing a new structure in which Ineos representatives will sit on that board, allowing them to exert influence on those matters. He's not concerned about the immediate control of the business arm, um, but he has negotiated the mechanism to eventually purchase the majority of shares and complete uh, a takeoff. But Gary Neville put some stuff out on LinkedIn and then he followed it up on some social media, um, which I think could be a really good... Um, I mean, I'd love to talk to Gary Neville about this, in all honesty, but I think this would be a really good way of um, of finding out everything about what Sir Jim's planning to do if he was able to come public with some of this. So, Gary Neville, 16 questions. I'll read them out. Uh, and you guys let me know what you think about them in the comments. Uh, he says, what does the distribution of funds look like? Is this cash being taken out of the club? I think he started off with quite an inflammatory question because a million percent that is what's happening. Um, which Glazers are going or is it a family dilution? I believe it's a family dilution, but again, we don't know that. Uh, it's just a guess. How does it impact the New York Stock Exchange shareholders? Um, does the executive stay the same i think he's talking about those 12 board members does the sporting side stay the same above the manager who within the board has sporting control are there future dilution clauses that with the glazer family in any deal you do as a minority shareholder when are they united are maxed out on credit and debt so how is this deal going to change the capital structure and the financial issues that the club has is any further debt being placed on the club is any debt being paid off these are great questions um how does this deal impact the board composition? How does a minority shareholder um, impact the negative culture within the entire organisation? Old Trafford is tired and need a significant redevelopment. How does this deal resolve this issue? Will this deal allow development of the training ground to its required standard? Old Trafford requires significant investment in surrounding land. Does this deal impact requirements positively or does it leave it as a concrete wasteland? How does a minority shareholder stop cultural decline across a whole organisation if people who have overseen this decline still have a majority shareholding? Um, fucking phenomenal work, Gary. Absolutely phenomenal work. Put it across really professionally. I'd have just called them cunts and, and moved on with it. But it'd be nice to see um, if they're able or if Sir Jim is able to uh, to actually come back and answer any of those questions uh, because they deserve answering. And he's fully right in doing that. My screen's frozen. Hopefully I'm still live. Um, but I'm going to pull up a different screen and um, and see if I can get involved with some comments from you lot. Um, 
I'll just wait for this to load up and then I'll get in the mixer. Um, but yeah, I really like that from Gary Neville. I really do like that from Gary Neville. And this is the interesting thing. This hasn't necessarily gone through yet. We're still waiting for this to actually be you know, app approved or rejected. By all accounts, it sounds like it probably will um, be approved. Um, let me just see what's being said here. Um, notes from Materiality says, Pro Gym equals Pro Glazer equals Pro Debt. Um, I think you're pro thick if you think that. It's not necessarily the case. Um, and as, I think as people have pointed out, look, 12 months ago when the club came up for sale, you'd have taken someone taking 25% of them. This just feels like a shit deal because we was offered someone that wanted to come in and absolutely blow it out of the water. You, we have seen, and, and again, this is up to you whether you believe it is genuine Qatar um investment or if you believe whatever the fuck you believe it's up to you but from what we see happen around the world cup and the the, the sheer quality of the the work that had gone on for the world cup you know that in terms of infrastructure and investment it would have been absolutely blown out of the water and then you would have answered a lot of those questions it would have brought up its own questions for sure um but it would have answered a lot of those questions of gary neville now because that was on the table and now that's off the table, people have seen their ass, And I get it. But you can't just say anyone that's pro-gym is pro-glazer. I'm not pro-gym. I don't want more debt on the club. That's a question I need answering. You know, that is a question I need answering. I need answering on what happened in terms of um, what what's gone on at Nice. Now, I know um, Nice have started to turn things around, but the results on the board at the moment for Nice aren't great, this season aside. So have they finally kicked into gear? Uh, so I just missed the comment there, but someone just said if they refuse to answer the questions, it's because we know the answer. Um, Lewis says, I can't believe people are saying it's better than nothing. It's like being offered a kick in the balls, but then only get a slap in the face and saying it's better than a kick in the balls. There's a little bit of that for sure. Um, SSMUFC says, Microsoft's ABK takeover and United's takeover, seeing actual movement, what a weekend. Both have dragged on far too long. Don't know anything about ABK. Don't know who that is. Uh, Big T says, if Ineos brings sporting people and regenerate Old Trafford to a 90k capacity, is Jim a problem? I, I don't know if... I don't know if you can answer that just yet. You, you, cannot, you can only speculate. Um... Sir Twizzler says, could have been a complete reset. It's not, mate. And you're right. And you're right. And that's what Gary Neville's asking in those questions. How is a minority board member going to oversee a cultural reset when the majority um, stakeholders are the ones that have overseen the cultural decline? It's such a fucking eloquent way to be like, what are you going to do when these cunts are still in charge? Which is probably how I would have written it. <laughs> can we get Gary Neville on five? I can certainly ask Rio because I think that is it's something definitely worth exploring. Lewis says, Steve, I can't get my head around what um, could have been seeing Jasim's proposal. Now we have to put up with the Glazers for another decade. Worst part is Jasim will go and buy Liverpool now. Um, well, do you know what? If he does, he was never a United fan in the first place, was he? Because what you know, how much of a prick is he going to look parading himself in a United shirt, telling everyone he's a United fan, and then buying Liverpool? You know what I'm saying? Um... Exit says the grief from the instant gratification sugar hit generation is insane. Um, does Paul look like Phil and Grant? Got a bit more hair than them, but yes. Um, Sean says, I'm pro Jim, anti Glazer, but my God, is it a big improvement at the beginning of the end of the Glazers? Uh, Jed says, Ten Hag didn't want a director of football, hence Ragnick leaving. If Mitchell or Edwards come in, could that be the end of Ten Hag? I don't know if he did want or didn't want a director of football. He had one at Ajax. So I, I don't know if you can answer that question, to be honest with you. Uh, there was another Super Chat which just disappeared. Let me just try and find that, because it may have been a, a minute ago. Uh, Pig Rise says, nothing to say. Have uh, a two and a half and keep up the good work. All right, thank you very much. Um, ben says, uh, how are my feet these days? Whatever it was, fucked up a while ago. I gave myself plantar fasciitis, like, basically this time last year, by doing that 457 kilometers. I've had an injection in one of them. I'm still waiting for the injection in the other one. Um, but yeah, they're better. I've started doing a bit of mountain biking, so I'm not either running or tabbing on my feet as much. 
Um, Trap Chatterbox says, where do I keep getting the energy to care as much about the clubs when so much of what happens is beyond your control? Everything's, um, everything's out of our control. Doesn't mean you don't care. I was indoctrinated as a child and I'm fucked now. Um, this is me forever. Um, my link of it, Savage says, oh, I like it. Um, I can't see how this is being viewed negatively. Glazer selling completely now was ne clearly never on the table. No state ownership and a step in a better direction. I don't necessarily agree that the, that the Glazer selling entirely was never on the table. I think it was clearly on the table. It sounds like Sheikh Jassim might have fucked it by talking the truth, which is ridiculous. If people don't like the fucking truth, then they're deluded. It's, and the truth is, they fucked us. Uh, Sean says, Gary Neville talks so much BS. He's a pundit. He never said a word, word whilst he was at the club. Only started talking when his brother got shipped out. I, to be fair, I don't necessarily think that is the case. Also, he isn't just a pundit. He's also an owner of a football club. Gary Neville has had every single job in football, by the way. He's been a player. He was an academy player. He's been a player. He's been an international player. He's been a, um, a player that's featured in and won, unlike a lot of the fucking pundits, titles, um, Champions League titles. He's gone to World Cups. He's gone to Euros. He's done so as a player. He's done so as a coach. He's also managed, um, and he's also managed abroad. Didn't go well for him, but he did it. Um, he's become an owner. He's been a director. And now he's a pundit. I think the only thing Gary Neville's not done is be a fucking kit man. And I wouldn't put it past him to have done that on some fucking point. So when Gary Neville talks about football, you'd go right to fucking listen to what he's got to say. Especially on this front. Because he knows what he's talking about on this front. Um, Lee says, when Neville was at the club, Sir Alex was there. Who was going to go against Sir Alex? Great point. Um, fun case says there's a lot of people pointing out so Jimmy's running Nice the same way and the fans hate him I think that's a very very valid point and question Ben says I wonder how much truth behind this whole process it will be a biography of Sir Jim in like 10 years after he's full owner of the club that's a good point um, Thomas says like him or not never has a voice that can be heard and knowledge a million percent um Matt says the Nevilles clearly have some supernatural birthright to be sports people. Yeah, when your fucking sister plays for England at netball, you and your brother are supposedly good enough to go and play first-class cricket but decide to play football instead um, and go on and achieve what you achieve. Gary Neville and Phil Neville have become figures of fun. I think because they're not... You know, they're a little bit on the nerdy side. But do you know what? They were fucking damn good athletes at the end of the day. And Phil Neville, for the abuse that some have levelled at him, during his career, Phil Neville's got a career that Steven Gerrard could only fucking dream of when he looks at his trophy cabinet. Um, do I think there's a, a chance that Jassim makes another bid? Maybe. Anwin says, why am I against state ownership? Don't get it as an Indian. Um, I don't get how you don't get it. Why would you want why would you want your football club to be the, the pawn of um, another state? You know, forget about the human rights atrocities. You are literally, um, you know, a propaganda PR wing of another country. And for everyone that's literally in the middle of typing, well, what about what Britain's done? I wouldn't want fucking Britain owning United either. I wouldn't want any state owning United. My preference is that it's owned by the fans. Probably not going to get that, right? What's the next best thing? Probably someone who's a fan. But ideally, someone that's not going to put debt onto the club. Um, Blah says, last couple of days, uh, we have shown how easy it is for the Glazers to get away with what they do. Fans will just eat up whatever shit is served to them. Uh, I don't know if that's the case. I really don't think anyone's eating up anything that the Glazers feed us. Um, Red Lad says I want to support a football team and not be compromised by being owned by a country um, so Twizzler says what happened to Rio saying Qatar was done I don't fucking know 
Um, Richard says, are we not just going full circle? Jim bringing in Dave, Dave Brailsford to run things. Another non-football person running football matters. Isn't this the big problem that we've had since the Glazers came in? I think the difference is uh, so Dave Brailsford's actually involved in elite sport rather than just shit malls in Florida. Contrarian says, Howson prefers Jim Radcliffe over Qatar. Madness. When did I ever say those words? Have you just fucking made them up, you absolute mashed potato brain? Uh, Annie Rude says, with all due respect, people can keep talking about director of football and Radcliffe's plans. I don't care. I just don't accept Radcliffe as the owner, just like I don't accept the Glazers. I mean, okay, that's also deluded, mate, because guess what? For 18 years, they've been the fucking owners and in the process extracted a million, a billion and a half out of the fucking club. So you can be like, not my owners, but guess what, mate? They fucking are. They absolutely are. Um, Pig Rise says the Nevilles aren't laughed at for being nerds uh, they fancy being managers and get annihilated that's why people laugh at them yeah, but how many other people have tried to be a manager and been annihilated fucking loads have Brian says I'm expecting a plot twist with the words of Romano statement Jasim is prepared to pull out of the deal I don't think he, he's actually pulled out interesting um it says, I can't believe how much hate Sir Jim is getting when he's actually trying to help us. Uh, ben says, what happened to Beckham getting involved? Um, I feel like I saw that headline and it disappeared just as quickly. Because people went 1 plus 1 equals 4,052. That was it. Beckham said, I know the person who could do it. Didn't, no, that was it. Uh, a Liverpool fan in the comments says, Steve, do I trust Jim? I've never met Jim. I can only go off what it has happened at Nice. That is all I can go off. Yinka says, I was too young to understand the Glazers takeover. Now I can feel the griff because Qatar can't get United. Um, Big Bald Basis says, is it not market manipulation? Who is it market manipulation by? Um, Exit Light says maybe Beckham was hinting at Sir Jim rather than Qatar. Very unlikely when he was paid, what was it, over a hundred million from Qatar to to promote their World Cup thing. You know, do you really think that that would have been the case? I mean, it's a bit of a stretch. I'm going to be honest. Um, Jed says sporting control is pointless without financial control. Yes and no. It it needs both, but at least having the sporting control is is one one way to do it. Um, Tartan says, "Do I think Jim the Rat will be good for us?" You obviously don't call him Jim the Rat. I think it's a little bit disrespectful. I don't know. I have no idea. None. Um, Star says, "Do I think the only way the club could get anyone the only way anyone could get a percentage of the club is by letting the Glazers stay?" From what I've heard from what's gone on in the Qatar side, the Glazers just didn't want to sell. And I don't know why people thought it was done at one point or it was extremely close to being done and then it wasn't. I don't know. I'm not privy to those conversations. Life Riley says, suppose we've got more debt to be weighed down with to look forward to. Good times. <laughs> um... Sibusio says, "Where Sir Jim takes, Sir Jim is takes right. That's I can't read that. Sorry." Um, Chris says, "Jim's gonna want to spin this shit pretty quick. Um, needs to come in with him releasing something with assurances that he takes a minority." Um, Yinka says, "What are the positives? Well, the positives that you've got someone with actual sporting ambition on board. That might be a positive." This is a guy that is involved in sport and okay, I would concede that Nice haven't done a madness so far. But his uh, cycling one have and I know that he's done some bits with his car. I don't think I'd ever buy one of those but I know that he's tried to do um, what they've tried to do. I think he's someone that actually likes sport or at least understands it to a certain level. Uh, Tariq says, why is Stretford Paddock doing less content this season? We're not. I think we are anyway. 
Uh, Mark says Glazers want to milk every cent out of the club. Fact. Daniel says Jasim could have done a staggered takeover, but sports washing needs it now. Maybe. Um, Big T says if Jim gets Campos to bring us Mbappe, would we pipe down? Do you want Mbappe? Why would you want Mbappe? Being very realistic, right? You've got to separate the ability of the player with the baggage of the player. And that includes his wages and everything else on top. Anyway, I'm going to wrap it up there. I'm sure there'll be 52 more other videos about what's going to happen um, because of this takeover uh, as we progress through the week. And obviously we've got the the whole board meeting on Thursday, so I'm sure we'll be reacting to that Thursday, Friday. As always, cheers for tuning in. There has been a ton of you piling over on the Reddit group. Uh, it looks like it's popping off real nice over there so check the link in the description there is a link to reddit in there people are getting involved with the comments if you have to create a new account it will initially block you but I'll, i can just um i can approve those comments um when i get around to doing so so just go dive in get involved in a conversation uh, and i'll see you guys over there but cheers for tuning in make sure to subscribe i'll see you in the next one Hey, thank you for watching the video. If you are new around these parts, then don't forget to subscribe. My channel is proudly supported by my community on Patreon. If you'd like to get a little bit of extra content, a Discord group, meetups, five-a-side games, weekly podcasts, behind the scenes, and even an occasional bit of transfer news as and when I get it, then for the price of a pint, you can show your appreciation for the content that we make and get some goodies for doing so as well. Check the link in the description or click the button right here. You'll also find all of my socials here too.